Welcome to PowerPoint 2010 Picture Tools. I'm Trainer Lori. So what are picture tools? They are an amazing array of, of options to use, tools to use when uh, in PowerPoint to um, manipulate and change your picture. It is as powerful as any picture uh, software. It's a, an amazing set of tools and these are by far my favorite. Can you hear the enthusiasm in my voice? For example, uh, here's a before picture of a friend's uh, dog, and there's the after picture. But even in, uh, you could do this possibly in the old version of PowerPoint, but look at this. <laughs> this is the same picture now as part of a, uh, a composition photo, and you could do all of this in PowerPoint now. It's an amazing set of tools. Make sure it's on, and to do that, you have to be clicked on a picture. Otherwise, the picture tools. Uh, tab does not show. And there's lots of tools and we'll, we're going to go through them all so we'll go through quickly. The first one is uh, that we're talking about is set transparent color. Now this is an old tool that we've had before and it was always a wonderful option. We'll find it under color now. Uh, but for example in the background of Lisa here I want it to disappear but because it's a photo there's lots of different shades of white and it appears everywhere including her face and that's not what we want we want it to look something more like this and to do that you would have to mask out the background and you can do that now uh, there's a tool called remove background as your first tool and it's a little daunting at first you just remember that you'll want to change the size of the uh, border around the picture uh, to enlarge it as, as much as you want so you can actually see the parts you want to keep then you use these tools here you can see there's the mark areas to remove and the mark areas to keep and you can see that these are areas that I want removed so I click and drag over it to uh, tell the tool that all these pixel combinations are ones that I don't want and so it turns it pink to mask it out and then the plus sign are those that I want to keep because if I, if I saw the pink somewhere I would want to mark it out the next one is sharpen and soften. You can take a photo that's slightly out of focus and make it a little bit better. This is a photo uh, with my, my phone camera and you can see here I softened it here on this side and I sharpened it on this side so it actually looks like it's in focus more. Now of course nothing can actually fo make it in focus if you didn't take it in focus but it gives the illusion of being in focus by sharpening up the the uh, contrast between the pixels. If you don't understand about pixels uh, you'll want to come to a, another training that we have on that. Now this is a picture that is okay again with a picture phone but if I use the normal brightness and contrast, which I never do because of this, uh, it may wash it out too much or darken it too much, when really what I want to do is have more contrast. So I usually go right to the picture corrections options down at the bottom. And with that, you can actually choose the brightness and the contrast level, So, which gives, I think, a much better quality picture. adjust color. Uh, this is a masked picture of Kenny, so the background is completely uh, gone. And you can see I can uh, take out some of the color. Uh, in fact, I can make it completely black and white by uh, desaturating it or taking out the color. I can change the uh, red to um, uh, and blue color tones, uh, and that helps when depending on what your light source is. I, and I can make it a complete washout. Uh, or I can completely just change the color. Here's a, a sepia tone option, and here's where it's it's a pale blue. You, you can just by clicking on it. In fact, if you're not sure, just hover over any of these colors, and it will uh, change it for you. Um, but it won't change it permanently till you click it. And you can see that you can choose more colors here. And this is where you'll find that set transparent color. Artist effects. Look at these. I mean, how cool. You may not want them for everything, but it's an interesting concept depending on what you want to do with it. Look at that nice drawing. You can even make a, a coloring book uh, for Kenny. Now to compress your pictures, I've had a lot of people tell me that their their emails, uh, their PowerPoint is too big to email and probably has a lot to do with uh, the pictures. So you can actually compress the pictures. For example, if I, I, I crop this picture of Sarah, but 
if I click on crop again, you'll see that the outside edges are still available. Everything that I cropped out is still there. And so that's taking up a lot of bloat in my presentation. So if I use the compress pictures option, it'll say, do you want to delete the cropped areas? Uh, you can also choose to only apply it to this picture. By the way, that is default. If you want to do it to every picture in the presentation, you'll want to uh, uncheck that, which I generally do just before I'm done. You can also choose your target output uh, of the resolution. 96 is what you would want if you're going to email it, or you can have it uh, larger. Adjust and reset picture. Uh, so here's a picture that's been artistically changed, but I decide I don't really like that. I want to go back, but undo. Maybe I've done too many other things and the undo option isn't available. Well, you can always hit the reset. Reset will undo the artistic or any of those uh, changes that we'll be looking at in just a few minutes. However, if you notice on the drop down, you also have the option to reset the size so you can make it smaller again. Uh, in this case, it happened to be smaller. Sometimes they're much larger, but it'll resize it back to the original. Now the picture styles is awesome. This is probably the first thing you've played with because it's so big on there and it's like what, what can I do with these? Well here's the original picture but just by hovering over any one of these you can get an idea of what it will look like. Um, here's with a reflection and rounded edges. Uh, here's with a big border like a frame. Uh, Here's with a plastic border. It looks three-dimensional, doesn't it? It looks like a frame sitting on a, on a table. Uh, these are wonderful, and I wish I could show them all, but we don't have time. I highly recommend you go in there and try those right now. And it, remember, you can always use the reset picture if you want to go back to a normal picture. These are picture effects which are similar to the others. For example, this one is shadow. And here is the soft edges at 25 pixels. So we took off a lot of the edge by using the soft edges. And then here's 3D rotation. So you can, um, instead of making it uh, multiple options at once, you can uh, choose them individually. You can also choose any one of these and go in and change them individually. So you have complete control over it. This would be something I would certainly use in Word because it's now a caption. That means that it comes with not just the uh, change of the picture, but also with a, a text or caption option. And then wherever it says text like this in the uh, brackets, you simply replace it with your own text. Now the crop tool has changed dramatically. Um, at first I didn't like it because I didn't understand it, but now that I understand the power of it, it's very, very uh, useful. Uh, so you put on crop to take out any of the square edges that you don't like, and, and crop generally will just crop out in straight lines. Uh, what you do is you take the, these lines and you drag them in. You push the lines essentially to resize the picture, to take out the parts you don't want. However, now we have the option to actually crop to a shape. And so all the usual casts of characters that we have for our shapes, you can uh, use as the, the cutting tool. And then if you click crop again, you will be able to position whatever you're cropping, the picture in the background, you can, you can move it around within that shape. You can also resize to the right height. So first, what you want to do is resize your picture. Now you can see the hydrangeas have gotten squished here, but they are the height that I want. So then we go to crop fill. Now on the, on the drop down, you have the option for crop fill. That means that now my crop tool will turn into the correct height and I can crop it down. It ought just by clicking, it will automatically make it the right height. Again, I can hit the crop button and reposition the hydrangeas within that, that area. Maybe I want the whole picture to fit within that height. Then once I've made the height, I just choose fit and it will take the whole picture and make it to fit. Well, this is a really cool tool. This is something that I saw online, and anytime you see a good picture, you think, hmm, how can I recreate that? And so let's look at the steps that it would take to recreate this, this uh, very interesting looking image. Well, first you duplicate the photo. So you have two copies of it. Then you turn one into black and white by desaturating it. Remember, under color, we take out the color and it becomes black and white. And on the second picture, I resaturated. In fact, in other words, I, I made it a little deeper saturation so that the color stands out more. Then I cropped that one down so that I took out all the extraneous and showed just the, the part we want to emphasize. I positioned the color one over the black and white one and then put a frame around the color one. 
How easy is that? Now that you know, this is a wonderful tool that will allow you to do just about anything that you would like to do with your photos. Thank you, and see you next time.